everybody, Vestmore here, and in this video we're going to be talking about Super Smash Bros Ultimate, more specifically, edge guarding, and how you can apply it to your play in order to get the best results. But, before we get to that, allow me to introduce myself properly. I'm a new part of the team here at Argus Gaming, and have been working behind the scenes to help bring you guys some awesome videos. However, I may voice some more videos for you guys in the future, so, if you like what you hear, do let us know. Anyway. Without further ado, welcome to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Workshop. If you enjoy this or find it helpful, then please leave your feedback in the form of a like or a comment down below, and be sure to let us know what you'd like to see in future episodes. Also, be sure to check out our final giveaway of this year for your chance to win a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Limited Edition Nintendo Switch if you haven't already, by clicking the link in the description box down below. Let's begin! Firstly, for those of you who are unsure of what edgeguarding is, allow me to elaborate a little bit further. Edgeguarding is when a player who has successfully knocked their opponent off of the stage attempts to keep them from getting back on it, KOing them in the process. This leads to many different strategies being employed in order for the edgeguarding player to successfully keep their opponent off of the stage, and we will be going through the most common strategies used to achieve this. So let's talk about offstage edgeguarding. Offstage edgeguarding is when you chase your opponent off of the stage in an attempt to stop them from recovering. For example, using one of your aerial attacks to launch your enemy even further away from the stage, which can make it almost impossible for them to recover if not KO them outright. The quicker and more space an aerial attack covers, the better. A good example being Marth's forward air. Even if your enemy moves out of the way of your attack or uses an air dodge to avoid it, if you are far out enough there is still a good chance that they won't make it back on stage. A quick word of warning. When you leave the stage, you only have your one mid-air jump, so it's a good idea to save that until after you've hit your opponent. Otherwise, unless you are playing a character with a good recovery or multiple jumps, like Kirby and Jigglypuff, you may accidentally KO yourself. Another offstage option is the use of spike moves. These are moves that send your opponent straight downwards, which, if used offstage, can result in incredibly early KOs. Many characters have spikes as their down air move, however there are some exceptions to this. The drawback to spike moves are that they can be incredibly difficult to land at times, as they usually have a slow startup time and require you to hit your opponent with a specific part of the hitbox. Once you have these practiced though, they are an incredibly deadly tool to have at your disposal, with most opponents hit by them while over the edge being a guaranteed kill. Lastly for the offstage options is stage spikes. Similar to spikes, these usually result in a KO, however, they can be much harder to set up. They are called stage spikes because they require you to knock your opponent into the bottom of the stage, which causes them to bounce off it and to their doom. This is best attempted when your opponent attempts to recover from a low angle, or against the stage. Some recoveries are capable of stage spiking you when you go for an offstage edge guard, however, so be warned. It is also important to note that skilled opponents are able to tech stage spikes, which will stop them from bouncing off of the stage. If you are unfamiliar with teching, be sure to check out our intermediate guide for an in-depth breakdown on the subject. All in all, even though going off stage is a risky option, if you pull it off correctly, the reward is great. Moving on from there, we have on-stage edge guarding. This is when you stay near the edge of the stage and attempt to intercept your opponent as they recover. There are several ways to do this, and your options will vary depending on what your opponent does. First things first, it's best to stand slightly back from the ledge so that if your opponent recovers down low, you aren't at risk of being hit by their recovery move. Being in this position allows you to cover most options your opponent has. If they attempt to recover up high, you can jump and use your forward air to knock them back out. It's best to use an aerial that stays out for as long as possible, just in case they try to air dodge through you. However, most aerials will do. If you notice that your opponent always air dodges to get past you, try baiting this out by jumping towards them. Then, once they are stuck in the ending animation for their air dodge, you can punish them. If your opponent recovers at a horizontal angle to the stage, you can easily punish them by using your forward or down smash. This will usually result in a KO, if they are a high enough percent. Assuming your opponent recovers any lower than the stage, then they are most likely going for a ledge grab. If your opponent is successful in grabbing the ledge, they will gain invulnerability to attacks for a short time while they're on the ledge. From here, they generally have four options. 
They can climb straight back onto the stage. They can do an attack get up. They can do a flip into the air. And they can do a forward roll. Some characters can counter these options better than others, but generally this turns into a game of rock, paper, scissors. Now, you can usually cover the roll and the regular get up by doing a down smash, as on most characters this covers both directly in front and behind you. The air flip can be countered in a similar way to when your opponent recovers high, by jumping and using an aerial. The attack get up can be countered by shielding, and then either grabbing to throw them back off of the stage, or following up with a quick attack to knock them back off stage. More advanced players may also decide to fast fall off of the ledge and then jump into an aerial attack to throw you off guard, among other creative ways to get back on stage. So it's important to always watch what your opponent is doing and react accordingly. It is also a good idea to see if there is a pattern in how your opponent likes to get up off of the ledge. Everybody plays differently, but if you can figure out what they favour, then you will have an easier time finishing them off. Last but not least are projectiles. Characters with linear projectiles can poke at recovering enemies from a safe distance while on stage. Characters with throwable projectiles like Peach and Link are able to stop their opponent's recovery by throwing their projectiles off stage, and in the case of Link, detonating them. If timed correctly, you can easily kill a recovering opponent using your projectiles, like in this example with Robin. So. There you have it. That was a broad overview of the concept of edge guarding. But with that said, every character has different techniques and tools they can use to successfully edge guard. So get creative and experiment. Anyway, that's the end of this video for now. For more great tips, be sure to check out the other guides on our channel. And as always, be sure to come back again for more Super Smash Bros. Ultimate content. Thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check out some more awesome stuff from us here at Arix Gaming, then you should definitely try to catch 269 and Paradise Central streaming 6 days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. They play a wide range of games, and what's more, we also have the end game store. By watching their streams, you earn currency, and you can redeem that currency on the end game store for really cool prizes. Those can range from things like games, comics, and figures, all the way up to controllers, capture cards, and even consoles. So definitely drop by and become part of the community. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you're subscribed and be sure to click on that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. You can watch more videos by clicking on the options here. But once again, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.